Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 70, where you send me your Flat Earth questions and comments to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will try to answer them here as best I can. So let's just punch through a whole bunch of survival guides first. I, I, I mentioned them because, you know, when people bother to send me an email, I'm, I'm going to call you out for it. So this one's called Survival Guide, Please. Thanks, Angela Ramsey. Get rid of that one. And this one's called Survival Guide. Mark, been flat earth since the clues. Please send me the survival guide. That's from Purcell Phoenix. Thank you for that. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, could you send it to me, please, from Jenny B. in Largo, Florida? You bet. Sent them to all those. And let's do one more, and then we'll get into the first real email. This one's called Survival Guide, but there is some text here. Hi, Mark. My name is Ariberto Santos, and I am a flat earther for over a year. It was easy for me to get convinced about our earth shape as was to me to convince my brother who lives in Singapore with a simple test. I asked him if he can see the moon there as I can see the moon and sun at the same time at 10.30 a.m. here in New York, and he said yes. Then I asked him, how come if we live in a globe? So he was in he he. Laughter? Uh, I'm reading it as is. Question is, in the Bible, God created the day and night, and later he creates the sun and the moon, so there is a day without sun. Yeah, it's easy. Again, we were doing, we've been doing that literally, that was the first thing we did in software simulations, which was you can create light and dark in an area. You don't need a sun and the moon to create light and dark. You just literally make the sky shades of light and shades of dark. Not, not hard at all. In fact, we had to do it without a sun in the beginning because an animated sun was too hard to program. And it was only after, you know, then we put a stationary sun in the sky that didn't move. So it was kind of a cheat. So the sun was there and it was light and dark and then the sun would just disappear. And then finally we'd have the sun move across the sky and then finally move across the sky in real time tied to your clock. So anyway, uh, Mark, thank you to open our eyes and keep it flat. Ariberto Santos from Brazil. Very welcome. This one's called Reality. And there's no content. There's a picture. Let's look at the picture real quick. And yeah, yeah, it's a picture of four mile an hour, merry-go-round, people smiling, 60 miles an hour, people screaming, and then at 1,040 miles an hour, people just sitting still having a picnic. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I like that. I don't often describe pictures to people, but that one was worth it. This one's called Flat Earth Meetup Miami. Hello, Mr. Sargent. Thank you for your persistence in defending the truth. Can you connect me with any Flat Earth Meetups or contacts in Miami? Also, have you heard any news on the disappearance of Brian Mullen? I love his work and his videos help me to believe in a flat earth. Thanks, Mark Jensen. Okay, first, yes, there's all sorts of meetups happening. A bunch in Florida. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Florida. And you'll find, you'll see the ones that are there. And if you want to see who's organizing them down there, just go to the end of the video or in the comment section, you'll see their, their info. I don't generally put it in the description because I have to blanket coverage all my descriptions nowadays because I have so many videos. And as far as Brian Mullen goes, he is alive and well and living in North Carolina. And he, I don't know if he's in flat earth because he had to step away for professional reasons because he is a licensed uh, engineer and when you become certified you are uh, you have to follow their rules and the rules say that you cannot do anything to desecrate the image of engineering and so somebody one of our trolls reported him and said he's making engineering look bad and they took that very seriously and they said you can't talk about flat earth if you're an engineer it's like wow really so anyway, so Brian Mullen's still doing his thing, but yeah, he had to pull all his videos down because he's got a wife and a new kid and he didn't want to, look, you know, spend a lot of time to be an engineer. He didn't think it was going to be that serious, but apparently it was. Moving on. 
This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Please send me the Survival Guide file. I'm an avid follower of the Flat Earth Theory. Wishful thoughts that there will be more rogue scientists who will help explore Flat Earth may have the philosophical motives of why the lies of our Earth and heliocentric thoughts. Also, on the Flat Earth model, what's the Earth's diameter? Respectfully, Richie, a Pacific Islander. Diameter, don't know. 20,000 miles? 30,000 miles? We're talking about before or after you get to the barrier. Because if we're talking about just water distance, I don't know, say between 20 and 30,000 miles. But if you have to get out to the outer marker, it's going to be a lot further. Because remember, they were looking for it for 30 years before they finally found it. Look up Admiral Richard E. Byrd and all the Antarctic expeditions he did from 1928 until Operation Deep Freeze, which was Operation um, 1955 to 1956. This one's called, I left a voicemail today at 12.11 p.m. Hi, Mark. After taking a quick look at the possibility of a flat earth last year on some animated video I didn't bookmark and quickly dismissing it, I came across your clues on YouTube a few months ago. I watched all the clues a few times, then I ventured into your SME, subject matter expert, interviews the first night I could not sleep at all. <laughs> I hear that a lot. It's been flat earth downhill since then. I completed my AAS in multimedia design in 2011 at the f at 57 years of age after raising my children this was my first opportunity to attend college and i loved it i reference this because i recently noticed something peculiar although our conscious brain can only process between 12 to 16 per frames per second standard tv frames per second is between 24 and 30 i think it's actually more than that uh, the math says we are only able to process about half of what we view, but our subconscious registers everything. Keep that in mind. I think your numbers might be a little bit off. I heard that we can we can actually register up to 40 frames per second. But anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter because all the televisions are going at, what, 120 frames per second? Total overkill. Here's my recent personal observation. I watched a Netflix series called Seven Seconds this week. In one of the episodes, we were given a view into a 15-year-old boy's bedroom. A big earth globe was sitting on his dresser. Really? What 15-year-old keeps a globe on his dresser? Absolutely right. It made me wonder what other subliminal information supporting a globe earth was out there, especially since we can only process about half of what we see on the screen. My voicemail today was asking you if you think other flat earth folks might want to start compiling data of where we see the globe earth model being subliminally sort of inserted in a rather out of context setting like on a 15 year old boy's dresser yeah what what 15 year old boy nowadays has a globe why would they in fact most 15 year old boys don't really have much of anything uh, anyway i was a data or data analyst in a previous position and have the skill set needed to compile the data for others to review thought it might be interesting to check this out and could possibly link to other flat earth rabbit holes thank you for standing strong sharing the truth about where we live keeping it flat reg r-e-g-e a grandma in oregon yeah oh people have been on this for a while now where if you watch any movie or television shows nowadays nowadays that's been made oof, since the 1960s you're gonna see more and more globes just globes randomly put in places and because we're so used to seeing the globe we don't think much of it it's one thing to have it in a child's bedroom when you're younger or a classroom that, that we've seen it in classrooms so many times that it's old hat but then you'll see them in detectives offices and labs and all you know just about you it's amazing the and so many people's offices doesn't matter what the decor is in the office could be low rent could be real real high fashion and yet there's still a globe sitting there it's it's amazing again we just gloss over it it's like oh yeah globe whatever we we don't even look at it and we don't even make a mental note of it it's like until unless you're into flat earth then you catch all of them uh, this one's called Survival Guide and More. Hi, Mark. Flat Earth is my midlife crisis. I can't explain the spiritual movement that has happened inside me. I feel everything has changed. I try to stay active on Facebook with the topic. And I'm this. Close to making... She actually put two lines close to each other. To making my own YouTube channel dedicated to FE, Wilderness of Mirrors, or After the Sickness will be the channel's name. Really interesting titles. Wilderness of Mirrors or... After the sickness. Okay, is that so? It's going to be one of those two, or is that going to be the whole title, like wilderness, you know, wilderness of mirrors, or after the sickness? You're going to have both, or just one of those? Anyway, since I haven't got off my R's, oh, they're not from here. Like you have on YouTube, I figured I would drop a seed on a topic I think may 
many find of interest and with its tangent pull in those, <clears throat> excuse me, that have yet to look into the flat earth facts. Immediately, Earhart, she disappeared over the South Pacific Ocean in the Southern Hemisphere, the longest leg of only two over water, not land. I have heard several people bring up how ships find themselves off course using the globe-based maps when in the Southern Hemisphere. Could this be a link to why Amelia Earhart disappeared? The one no one has brought up until now. Oh yeah, they brought it up. You bet they have. Amelia Earhart, that was easy. And and yes, many people over the last couple of years have mentioned to me, is it possible that Amelia Earhart, because she would have been using the wrong maps, would have screwed up her fuel consumption and had to ditch somewhere? I think so. I will leave it at that and keep this short. P.S. Don't forget the survival guide, please. Thanks, Greg Spain. Really? Your last name's Spain? Okay. Well, then, let's move on. This one's called, what's it called? Question. Mark, can you make any suggestion as to which videos are the best ones to pass along to others who are questioning FE? Not everyone has time to view all of the ones out there. I got your email from one of your videos. Thanks, Terry. And let me see if I responded. Yes, I did respond to that person. The, yeah, I've got a, I've got a list, a perfect list just for people. If you want to pass on, it, the, the, the playlist is called flat earth shortlist for new people and it's got a whole bunch of different videos in it uh, i think i've got one in there and the rest i think is another 20 something of them they range from five minutes to a couple hours and so people can just pick and choose but they're all good introductory videos including i i, I did i had to throw it in there because it's, it's gotten a lot of traction the abc coverage when they were down at the conference when they were talking to everybody down there because people's like well if it, you know if abc covered it i can suppose i can't laugh at it directly because abc didn't laugh at it so that that's what i would recommend and that is the flat earth shortlist for new people check it out if you get a chance this one's called isa esa star wars hi mark i just saw strange world 134 and was happy surprised to see my stormtrooper suit picture the one next to the Isa Moon Rover. Haha, ha, nice one. Greetings, Pim. Yep. Yeah, if you guys want to send me your fun flat earth meme, flat earth picture, whatever it is. Because, I mean, the, the ones you see in the slideshows, not the videos necessarily. Although I, I will use videos that you send from time to time. 90% uh, of those I had nothing to do with. They were just sent to me by different people. And over the last two years, they just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger to where now I can do <clears throat> pretty much just any show and Strange Worlds. I think I only have to repeat them maybe once. So... This one's called Night Sky. Hello, Mark. How are you? First, I wanted to congratulate you on your Flat Earth Smarts video series. Oh, boy. That was... That's not me. That's not me. That's uh, AJC 1844. He's from England. I was specifically impressed with presentation of the night sky. I was wondering if you can direct to where I can locate a downloadable picture of the full night sky, which is, encompasses the entire earthly plane, not to say both hemispheres. Thank you kindly and best regards. I don't know if you can't, there is no such, you can't get download a picture of the entire full night sky because there's stuff that remember if this is a simulation just like a planetarium there are things that rotate off the grid off the display system because remember it's trying to portray a globe so there is no full night sky you can download and there's all sorts of planetarium programs out there i think stellarium is one of the best that's that's probably your best bet if you want to look at something in in real time or sort of real time you can use their little time travel function just go to stellarium there that's a that's a great make sure you have a big monitor when you when you look at it this one's called mark sergeant t-shirt hmm. I, I i don't remember reading this hi mark this is the french canadian guy i'm the flat earther who buys the mark sergeant t-shirt on redbubble Okay, I don't actually sell t-shirts, but but if anyone wants to use it, that's fine. You should not say that you hate t-shirt with your face on it. That pushes me to buy it. Ha ha. <laughs> In French, we have an expression. Oh boy, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Translation, we lease the one we appreciate. We lease... Oh, tease. Jeez. Glasses. I have... Oh, oh, I have ordered 500 research flat earth cards... 
I start to put some in grocery store, bookstore, bus, metro station, etc. My friends help me spread them around Montreal and the rest of Quebec province. Since the YouTuber censor war, I am a little bit perplexed. I change my mind at least three times for my future channel name, subject, and approach. Is my channel going to be shadow banned or something like that because of the title or subject? Do you know YouTube shadow bans some videos? Yes, I do. I do, but if you play it safe, they won't shadow ban you. I, I know that a lot of it's based on an algorithm, and if you have a lot of videos that are smacked routinely for being non-monetized, they will non-monetize your videos right out of the gate the second you put them up without even scanning them. Just just because it's like, well, we, you know, we hit the last five, we might as well hit this one. Um, every day they post at least five videos. YouTube will only notifies two or three of them by day, if that. that that's one of the YouTube things I, I never really agreed with, which was when they flag, when they yellow card you, like in soccer, when they yellow card you, a lot of the times they don't tell you. You, you have to go in literally to your creator studio and there's a little drop down that says uh, not monetized and you have to look at it um, not necessarily every day but at least every week just to make sure nothing's been flagged. This happens with uh, FEOHP, Jaronism, Conservatives and Conspiracy Content Channel. I decide to do a test. I subscribed to PewDiePie two weeks ago. Not a single one of his videos has been shadow banned. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's PewDiePie. He's the largest YouTube channel in the world. Whether or not his subscribers are real, and they're not, uh, he has supposedly 60 million subscribers, twice as many as any other person in YouTube, including mainstream celebrities, and he's not. So no, he makes YouTube a lot of money, although I don't think nearly as much as he used to because people are starting to realize he actually doesn't create anything. So no, you no. Know, look, politics is politics. If you're a really, really big channel, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt. Uh, look at that one guy who put up the uh, video of, of the dead man in the Japanese suicide forest. They, it took them all day before they took down that video, and yet if somebody else did it, that channel would have been destroyed. But I think it was Jake Paul, one of the Paul brothers, whatever. I'm getting old. I don't watch those kids. Anyway, uh, let me finish up this email. When YouTube says this bug is random, I don't believe them. No, you're absolutely right. Why this only happens on the channels they don't want us to watch. Absolutely right. P.S. I look at this video from YouTube team and the like-dislike ratio. Uh, let me click on it real quick and finish up this email. And it's from, oh yeah, let's talk about subscriptions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this one. Yeah, it's let's talk about subscriptions. And normally I would give it a thumbs down too. It's YouTube. It's literally the channel, six, six and a half million subs. It's called YouTube Help. And they were talking about all the, the people, the, they were trying to dispel some of the rumors where people say, look, I'm being unsubscribed and there's all sorts of funky things that are happening on YouTube, like YouTube isn't playing favorites or politics. And it has 2,000 thumbs up, 100,000 thumbs down, basically a 90 something percent thumbs down. If they were smart, they would, it's got 430,000 views. If they were smart, that's a lot of, of it's a, that's a huge ratio for thumbs up and thumbs down on a video. You know, we're talking at least a third here. That that's that's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. If you guys want to want to check something out, how YouTube doesn't do things right, uh, look at that video from the one their own help channel called "Let's Talk About Subscriptions." It was posted, and this one was posted a while ago. This was before the ad apocalypse. This was posted at the end of 2016. Uh, oh my god, yeah. So anyway, thank you for that. This one's called Tricky Question, Please. Hi, Mark. My name is Warren. Love your work and videos, etc. We have great conversations at our house and parties due to all this info. However, I keep getting asked one question. I cannot argue in favor of flat earth. Can you please help? Thanks. The moon. If the earth were flat, when the last blood moon happened, we all should have been able to say the same thing. No, 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 because you're using multiple display systems. Plain and simple, multiple projection systems. It's easy to explain away the stars flipped as they are far away and don't change. No, no, see, again, you, you can do this with instancing. We, we do this in software. And I know I'm not encouraging people to, to play massive games 
where massive multiplayer games where there's a fantastically huge environment and they have to build in stuff like this. But I came from that world, the tech world. And this is something we've been aspiring to. If we, in fact, if we had our way, we would build virtual reality. Uh, we just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, let's see. But in Australia, we saw a shadow coming from the 430 point of the clock. And in the U.S., <clears throat> they saw the shadow coming from the 1030 point of the clock on a flat earth. The U.S. should have seen this from the 830 point of clock relative to us in Aussie. The only way we saw this happen is we were looking at the same object. But one of us is upside down. It's not that you're upside down. The sky is upside down. And upside down isn't even the right word for it. Uh, it's just being shot from a different different angle. Remember, if a planetarium, if you go into a planetarium, they only have one projection system because it's not very big. You can stand on either side of it and you can see the other side of the, the planetarium. But the planetarium is like, say, 100 miles wide, just 100 miles wide, not 1,000 miles wide. 100 miles wide, you can get you you will you can get away with using multiple projection systems. It's easy, super easy. Uh, can you help explain this one, please, as I cannot seem to argue for Flat Earth when this question comes up? Yeah, I just did. There you go. <clears throat> this one's called Question About Sunlight Under the Clouds. Hello, Mark. I've been into the Flat Earth since I was mentioned on Coast to Coast, since it was mentioned on Coast to Coast several years ago. That was with me. Thought it was an odd topic, but I looked into it and haven't stopped looking since. I have viewed your clues and found them very educating. I have also followed others on the same subject matter. My question statement to you is, how do I explain the phenomena of the sunlight under the clouds in the evening hours? Thank you for your time and patience, Michael Fajardo Broker. I uh, don't know. As far as the, the sun being under the clouds, again, atmospheric lensing, some sort of angled refraction, some sort of Fata Morgana effect. Don't know. It's it's tough to say what, what optics are being used when we're talking about a setting sun. All I know is the sun is super, super small. It is very, very close. And the system was built to fool you. And not us, we didn't build it. Whoever built it was very, very clever. And it's a street magic trick. That's all it is. This one is called Survival Guide. Hey, Mark, can you please send me your survival guide? Love listening to your show. Good work. Thanks. Ish Mahoon from La Rock, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You're very welcome. And yes, I just sent it to you. T-shirt link. Hi, Mark. I hope that all is well in Flat Earth land. I would like to purchase a Flat Earth Army t-shirt for Jan in Dallas. Aw, that's nice. Jan in Dallas is great. I love her accent. Uh, that that she's, She has one of those great Texas accents. Uh, would you please send me a link so I can buy one for her? Thank you, Howard. And did I send one to him? Yes, I did. Cool. All right, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, this is Nathan Fowler here in Bluefield, West Virginia, keeping it flat. First off, thanks for all the work you put into this. It's time consuming, but you do a great job. Yes, it is time consuming, but I should be, and I will be spending even more and more time on this as this thing goes mainstream. Would love to call into the show on Tuesdays, but I work the night shift and enjoy the ones that I can call in. Fellas and ladies, keep it up. My two questions tonight. One, how hard is it to comprehend that we were told in school regarding the globe curvature math, eight inches per mile squared is not working. People have woken up to the lie. How hard is it to comprehend? It's it's tough because most people, we don't, we don't really push the math in school for various reasons. Math is when you get into algebra and advanced algebra and geometry and trigonometry and calculus in that order. It just gets it just gets worse and worse to where the the figures just will knock you over. You've got to have a certain brain set to 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 really absorb a lot of the math. That being said, even simple algebra in this case, eight inches per mile squared, most people just forget everything they knew about math when they get out of school. It's like, oh, thank God I can graduate, and they go on and do stuff. People like to be entertained. They don't like to learn things. They don't like to be educated. So. When we started focusing on the eight inches per mile squared, which is not our equation, it's mainstream sciences, I realized quickly that most people, you've got to, you've really got to spell it out for them. In fact, I'll, I'll do it here for you. Eight inches per mile squared is not intimidating in any way, shape, or form. It is eight inches per mile per mile. That's it. So you take whatever mileage is, so it's five miles away, it's five times five, which is 25. 
times 8 inches. That's the curvature. That's what the supposed curvature is supposed to be. And it gets more and more severe as you get further out. Because if you do 50 miles, that's 50 times 50 times 8, which is pushing uh, almost 1,700 feet. That's a lot. So most people, yeah, they, they, you've got to you've gotta drill it into them. You've got to repeat it. You gotta be repetitive. You gotta be redundant. You gotta say the same thing over and over. See what I did there? Anyway, number two, can someone do a flat earth video mashing up these two videos? Them being the John Carter, Virginia jump scene on Mars. <laughs> yeah, nice. To the Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong jumping on the moon. I can picture it in my head. Just can't do mashups like you or others can do. It's actually not a bad idea. Um, and I, I'll before I finish up his email because he's got one more little paragraph, but no questions. That that is something that I've I've been focusing on over the last few months, which is the lack of feats of strength on the moon. If you believe in the mainstream moon theory, the moon has one sixth the Earth's gravity. Of course, how they would know this before they actually went there, I have no idea. Unless you're just taking a guess, but uh, you know the moon is two thousand miles wide. The Earth is 8,000 miles wide, supposedly. How do you know it's one six gravity? But if it is one six gravity, that means, again, this isn't hard math, guys, it means a 180-pound man weighs 30 pounds. So if you're 180 pounds and you're athletic, like the astronauts have to be, let's say your vertical jump is, let's say it's 20 inches, right? We'll, 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 you know, white men can't jump. So if it's 20 inches... It's going to be six times that on the moon, right? That's, that's uh, 100, 120, yeah, 120 inches, which is a lot. You know, it's, 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 that's more than the height of, of uh, the average man. It should be like the John Carter thing. I don't know if it would be, it, it, but it'd be a lot. Your, your legs, your muscles, everything would be stronger because there would be not much gravity, which means everything would be lighter. You could lift the back of that moon rover. You could, heck, with a couple guys, you could probably tip over that damn lunar module if you wanted to, if it was one six gravity. And yet we never saw that. We never saw feats of strength. You should be able to throw things really, really far. Nothing would be heavy to you ever everything would be extremely light and that's not what we saw uh and on top of that why would you ever be moving in slow motion if it's a vacuum that you'd be moving really really fast if anything because remember there's hardly any gravity and there's no atmosphere there's there's no resistance at all you would be you would be just like john carter and with the exception john carter was there was no gravity at all i mean it was ridiculous he could jump hundreds and hundreds of feet but we should have seen that. We should have seen feats of strength and we should have seen much higher vertical jump. Oh, the spacesuit weighed a lot. It's like, really? How much did it weigh? Tell me how much it weighs. Some guy said, oh, it weighs like 300 pounds. I'm like, really? 300 pounds? I'm sorry. Even your heaviest suits of armor were like 100 pounds. If that. 300 pounds is more than the man weighs. You would not be able, literally, you would not be able to move. You would not be able to... You couldn't even put on the suit on the ground at Earth. You would have to have, like, you'd have to be fitted into the suit when, in the capsule. 300 pounds, my ass. Anyway, let's end this email. Shout out to fellow Flat Earthers and the veterans who woke us up. Mark Sargent, Eric DeBay, Rob Skiba, Robbie Davidson, Jaron, D-I-T-R-H, Patricia Steer, D-Marble, D-Nodal, and I have to add TigerDan925. He had some great content. He still does. It's good content out there. He just hasn't done anything. Somebody must have made him pull a Joe Rogan. Well, if that was the case, we, we would have heard from him. I hope they didn't disappear him. Keep it flat. Well, if they were going to disappear him, here's the odd thing. Why not kill the channel if you're going to take care of him? Why not? Why not get rid of him? Anyway, this one's called the F word. Hey, Mr. Sergeant. Mike? Mike? I it's, anyway, how's it going? I did not give any credence to these ideas initially due to mind-numbing conditioning, of course, but my pastor just said something, which one, uh, said something one day, which I had to go back and hear him say again on the tape he made of the sermon, and that is, the Bible says that the earth does not revolve around the sun, but the sun conversely actually revolves around the earth along with the stars. Yeah, that's the standard heliocentric model. I was stunned and leery at his apparent ignorance, but it caused me to view and take a good long look at your clues videos. And I am just about fully convinced of the veracity of this theorem. All that I need to do now is prove it for myself out of the Bible. 
That is why I'm writing to you, sir. Could you possibly send me a list of the scriptures all those Christians use from Bible to prove this conclusively? And could you please make a video with this in mind? I don't even have to. I'm going to just send you Rob Skiba stuff. Explaining why the Bible is true and every man is a liar. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sergeant. Mike, Mike, it's Mark. Why? I mean, yes, I know that my parents changed my name at the last minute. It was supposed to be Mike. And thank you for all your hard work, sir. I am in total agreement with your desire to see this thing exposed fully and made known to everyone. Yours truly, I, Ben Israel. Okay. And I did not respond to him, so I will put that in my to-do pile and we'll take care of that. This one's called, Have You Seen This? Hello, Mark. Wanted to pass this along. Looks interesting. I have followed the FE for a few years now. Did not know this group was actively conducting experiments. Uh, yeah, the convex earth, the, the Brazilians. This came from a comment left on Mia's new pair of glasses YouTube channel. Check it out. I would think you would be the first choice and best person to contact these guys and interview them on your show and find out if they are legit. Don't even have to because they actually have a segment out there where they learned about the convex earth from a... Portuguese-speaking alien that was hiding in the bushes. And they have a video of it. Kind of smells like a bait-and-switch. There you go. Potentially coming here with all the teasers about the concave Earth models, pics showing the flat horizon from high elevations. Would like to know what they are up to. It's kind of hard to believe that during the time it would take to gather all the evidence and do the research they claim to have been doing, this community would have not heard the, about them. Yes, please uh, let us know. Thanks, Royce. Yeah, they said they were doing the research for seven years. Really? Seven years? And now you're finally coming forward with it? No, they're jumping on the bandwagon. That's all they're doing. Yeah, I mean, the video was well done. The first hour of it with the experiments was was outstanding, which was it was great. But the the second part kind of trailed off and got kind of weird. So, but will it help us in the end? Yeah. Will it hurt us? No. If it was an American production, yes, it would hurt us. But since it was Brazil, yeah, not going to be much of an effect. This one's called Stephen Hawking compares Big Bang to the South Pole. Hey, Mark found a gem. No, the grass was interviewing. No, the grass was interviewing Stephen Hawking and asked him what was before the Big Bang. Hawking then goes on to describe how Einstein's theory proves there is a space-time continuum that this is just like Earth's surface, not flat but curved. Hawking then compares this instant, the instant the Big Bang happened to the South Pole, claiming there is no land south of the South Pole, just like there is no time before the Big Bang. This is blanking nuts, Mark. Blanking? <laughs> they are, you should have said fricking. Uh, or fracking. They are literally throwing it in our faces. I mean, how many times can he notify us that time and space are like Earth's surface? Curved, not flat. Later, Mark. That's from Virgil. Oop, oop. And I clicked the wrong button. Sorry, hang on one second. I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to scroll back down to where it was because I was trying to delete it and I went to another messaging center. And let's just get rid of that email. Back on track. This one's called Scary ISS NASA Thought. Hi, Mark. We've all noticed an uptick in mainstream NASA news the last few months and years. From newly discovered asteroids flying dangerously close to Earth to new life supporting planet discoveries to the so-called discovery of gravity waves and the SpaceX launch with the Tesla Roadster that is now supposedly orbiting the solar system to the planned moon and stars missions to achieving space travel near light speed Pfft, you know since when the list is ast astounding and growing i've not ever heard of so much space news in such a short time there is a reason why the powers that ought not to be thanks patricia are threatened by the flat earth movement and their ongoing fraud exposing research i am feeling they are very close to trying to put an end to fe they're about to make their move mark they're going to destroy the iss and kill everyone on board eh, we'll see They'll say it was a meteor strike or an oxygen tank explosion or similar. The narrative used will be to reinforce the existence of outer space meteors and a globe Earth in the minds of the population. As fraudulent and evil as NASA is, I suspect that lives will be lost of the unfortunate astronauts that are supposedly on board the ISS 
at the time of the tragedy. Sound crazy? These lunatics will do anything to maintain their power, and an event such as this would shock the world with grief not seen since 9-11. <laughs> what? If eight people die on the space station, you think there's going to be grief? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, that's not... Sorry. It's all about body counts nowadays, and... Eight astronauts, that's not going to do, that's not going to affect anybody, especially since it would be from a multinational community. Who the hell cares? Sorry, no offense, guys, but you, you got to kill a lot of people nowadays to create grief. Create it, and you, and you got to kill children. That's really where it comes from. We, we've become so desensitized to things that it just isn't going to cut it. Create a deep sympathy for the space agencies. Pfft, good luck. And most importantly to them, put deep pressure on the Flat Earth Movement, attempting to squash it once and for all by creating an intense anger against it. Remember, these are the same people who so easily publicly slaughtered dozens of men, women, and children in one of the most secure cities in the country and easily got away with it. Pondering why the Flat Earth Movement has been allowed to grow so easily over the last three years, and with support and even positive exposure by the MSM, this could be why. They set us up. I hope I'm wrong, but by discovering the biggest lie ever perpetrated on humanity and actively working to expose the evil, will that evil simply sit back and not unleash their evil? Let's just say evil one more time. To tighten their grip on the neck of humanity. Yes, but only if the Flat Earth Movement is wrong. That's from Scott. Thanks, Scott. This one's called Flat Earth Conference in South Korea. Hey, Mark, Suzanne, writing to you again from South Korea. I just listened to yours and Patricia's latest show and heard you make mention of the Flat Earth Conference happening this weekend in Seoul, South Korea. I just wanted to let you know that I have my train tickets and I'm going to be there for the full day event and I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm not going to be able to sleep these next couple of nights. This will be my first ever Flat Earth event of any kind since I woke up to the Flat Earth almost three years ago. Thanks to you and your debut on TFR with Chris and Cherie, I am just excited beyond words. Wish you and Patricia were going to be there as well, but hey, maybe the next time around. I'll be taking pictures and video and will upload to my Facebook page, Suzanne Borjo, and my YouTube channel of the same name. Also, I'm happy to report that I'm finally downloaded and watched the most recent King Arthur movie since I knew I'd love the soundtrack, if nothing else, and it was quite good. I gave it four out of five stars. Yeah, because I used the... Uh, one of the King Arthur montage uh, soundtracks for the beginning of Strange World. I love hearing you and Patricia joke around and banter back and forth. I kind of wished you weren't joking about you two getting married. Oh, that's nice. I think you two are great together just saying keep up the great work and spreading the flat earth truth. Blessings from afar, Suzanne Borjo. And yeah. Moving on. This one's called Satellites Attached to the Dome. And it's spinning. There we go. Mark, I can I I have believed in Flat Earth for about two years now and never have reached out to you before. In any case, while at work, I was thinking about the dome and geostationary satellites. I believe that the dome is a solid object that we cannot pass through, but perhaps we can actually touch it and affix objects to it like a suction cup on a wall. I don't know if it's that easy. Uh, while browsing the site worldwidetelescope.org web client and gazing at the images of the heavens, I kept noticing what looks like a reflection or outline of a satellite. In my mind, I imagine this object being stuck to the dome, looking out, and every now and then, due to reflection, it would take a picture of itself. Check out the images attached. Just something interested to speculate on, if anything. Maybe you have already seen this before, and I apologize. Thanks for all your hard work regarding Flat Earth and exposing the lies of our government. Regards, Matt. Welcome, Matt. This one's called, Where Does the Sun Go? Dear Mark Sargent, Where does the sun go at the end of the day and is no longer visible? The globalists would have us believe it's on the other side of the round earth. Well, no, it's just on the other side of the flat earth. It's really, really small. It just goes far enough away. Remember, it's, if it's really, really tiny, it's just a light going off in the distance. That's all it is. No different than a light on a boat going off in the distance. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes away. This one's called Doldrums. Dear Mark Sargent, I would like to thank you for your eye-opener. Sincerely, thank you. When you mentioned about the South Atlantic Ocean and that the GPS goes blank, then I remember that in the 80s, I crossed the ocean in a small yacht with a broken engine. From Rio to Cape Town, we only had the wind. We're sailing just above the 50-degree parallel, and the whole trip took 27 days. Happens that more or less after 2,500 miles, the wind stopped completely. 
For about two and a half days, we were stuck in the doldrums, which means that the ocean is absolutely flat as far as you can see. It's a hu like a huge table. Uh, he should have at least... Wait, is he talking about he did it or somebody else did it? I remember that he's like... Chris. He should have at least moved... Oh, he should at least moved us in the direction of the inclination, but we were in the same spot, so now the puzzle is taking shape. Thanks for your time. Kind regards, Paulo. Cool. This one's called Vacuum Question. Hello, Mark. I'm sorry for bothering you, but maybe you can find the time to answer this question for me. If we never were in space, how we know that there is a great vacuum? In Wikipedia stands that outer space has outer space has tor of less than one times ten to the negative ten sixth pressure. Who measured this? Well, good point. Can we even trust these numbers? Yeah. Also, good point. Thank you very much, and greetings from Vienna, Stefan. Good point. This one's called Attention Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, my name is David Jones. I'm interested in talking with you about some ideas about Flat Earth. If you could get back to me, I would appreciate it. I don't know if you ever heard of gospel tracts that church people pass out to try to share about their religion, but it would be a good idea to make some Flat Earth tracts to share with people ideas about the Flat Earth, not so much say Flat Earth, but just give clues like the moon, its own light, etc. Give me an opportunity to talk with you. Love your show. There's literally no punctuation in that. Well, no, there was a period at one point earlier on, I swear. Sincerely, David Jones. And I don't, I don't, I'll have to look those up. I don't know what gospel tracts, T-R-A-C-T-S. I've never heard that term. I will look this up. And church people are going, oh, how could you not know? But I don't know everything. Oh, this is, this is a huge email. Uh, and it's, it is massive. Uh, just know it was from Brian Canary. I'm not going to read the, I can't, I can't really read it. It's too, it's too big. It goes kind of over his life story and his big, big awakening. And, uh, but I, I will read it when, when I get a chance, I swear. This one's called Show and Jet Fuel. Mark, I'm slowly catching up with shows. So today was listening to show 214 and you read out one of my emails, Jet Fuel. I was in the Royal Air Force for 13 years. My first three years were spent in the flight line, seeing in and out aircraft servicing and refueling. So I know jet fuel exists as I had to clean up after all the spillages. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it does too. But remember, the that's not what we're talking about here. Flat Earth common side effects include massive open-mindedness and the ability to think outside the box. In this case, you know, not all of the thoughts are going to be golden. And I, I think the jet fuel thing is probably one of those. But hey, could be wrong. This one's called, What Happened to Curious Life of a Flat Earther? Mark, the message slug says it all. You seem to have a line on various things. Do you know? What might have you heard? Gr Cheers from the North, Jeff H. I do not know. I, I No one's ever mentioned that to me. If somebody knows what happened to a curious life of a flat earther, I would like to know as well. I, I did not know they were gone. I, I don't keep tabs on everybody. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, please send me a copy. Thank you, Peter Wimsley. You're happy to do it. Another one. Survival Guide, please. Hi, Mark. Please send me your survival guide when you have time. Thank you and love your show. And all you do for Flat Earth, stay flat. Paul and Krista Miller, Flat Earth for life. Yep. And if you're new to this and you don't know what I'm talking about, I've made a survival guide. Just what to do in the event of a long-term power outage. You can just email me and just put survival guide in the title. And I will send it to your email. It's only two megs. It's called Empty Shelves. I wrote it after the whole Katrina thing. Because nobody that came back from Katrina actually put food and water and batteries and flashlights in a box and put it somewhere. Even after Katrina. They didn't. It drove me nuts. Okay, this one's called shuttle speeds versus bullet speeds. A bullet travels at 1,700 miles an hour. We are also told the Apollo rockets were traveling at 24,000 miles an hour. How exactly were we able to slow a rocket traveling that fast headed towards the moon and execute a perfect landing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you're going to use a whole bunch of thrust to slow that thing down. A whole bunch of thrust. Ugh. I don't want to get into Apollo right now. The American Apollo program looked good on the surface, but it aged really badly. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find 
to find another video here that isn't too long. I'm sorry, another. Uh, this one's called Comets and Asteroids. Hello, Mark. My name is Claudio. Claudio? Claudio? C-L-A-U-D-I-U. It's a new one for me. I believe that Earth is not a globe, but I have no explanation about falling stars and comets in the sky. If you have a moment to clarify for me, I will appreciate. Thanks for the best regards, Claudio. And that is from... Sent from my Hawaii mobile. Didn't even know who I, H-U-A-W-E-I. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually, I don't know where that, what country that's in. But to answer the question, uh, meteors and comments, it's, well, as my former co-host once said, it's just like throwing rocks into an aquarium. You know, use a rail gun, some metal ore, fire it at a shallow angle at really high speed, let the atmosphere friction burn it up, <coughs> and try not to aim at any cities. If you can help it. My answer, and we haven't find me find me video of a um, of a comet or meteor that's actually hit the ground, where you could actually walk up to the ground later, and find find me a video you think after because we had a pretty some pretty big population centers out there, and I know that the world is seventy percent water, but uh, as far as that's concerned, why we've never even boats you know you should have a video of of one of those suckers hitting the water and creating a decent sized wave, if they're coming in at a really really high rate of speed. This one's called, hello, this is in regards to your Flat Earth Clues episode. Hello, Mark. First off, thank you for your research and education. I understand you're probably busy, but I was wondering if you could direct me towards some resources anywhere I can conduct some of my own resources. I looked for old original news articles in regards to the founding of NASA, Antarctica, and it's difficult to find anything original. Thank you, Jake. Uh, I, can, I don't know if I'm going to be able to point him towards resources, because again, do your own research. But I will see what I can do there. I'll put that in my to-do pile. This one's called Croatia is Flat. Hi, Mark. Please be informed. This sounds so familiar, like he sent this to me before. Please be informed that Croatia is flat. I know he sent this to me before. In Croatian national anthem named Our Beautiful Homeland, we are proudly singing, Oh, beloved, we're, we're your flat plains from the year 1835 from Croatian mountain Velebit over our beautiful blue flat Adriatic City. You can see Italy even distance is more than 100 miles. Please see video evidence from 24th October 2017. Best regards, Stanko Zagreb, Croatia, Europe, Flat Earth. Cool. This one's called Live Visual Interview on Zoom and Facebook. Oh, yeah. Producer wanted to do a, a web. Yeah, yeah. Producer wanted to talk about Flat Earth. Yep, 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 yep. This one's called Astronauts, Deaths in Space. Hey, Mark, thought you might find this stat astounding with thousands of rocket launches taking many hundreds of astronauts into space, some of them multiple times over six decades. How many astronauts have died in space? Answer is zero. Yeah, isn't that the truth? You'd think that so we'd get it. At, well, okay, died in space versus the ones. Okay, so the ones that died in the atmosphere, we, they supposedly have had a few. You have to have some. So you had Gus Grissom and his team. You had the Space Shuttle Challenger in the 80s. And then that other thing that was coming in from reentry was at Columbia, where, yeah, that one supposedly we lost a few. So I think we, we killed a dozen, maybe, give or take. Including as accidents traveling to or returning from space, a total of 19. Oh, okay. 19 people died on five missions. Yeah, what I just said. That was close. 19, 12. The Challenger and Columbia accidents and Virgin Galactic test pilot and four Russians. Oh, yeah. In over 60 years of the hundreds of astronauts who have lived, work, and space in the extremely hostile environment of space, some for several months at a time, not one has perished from any mishap or any ex unexpected or unforeseen event or any malfunction of any kind. Not one. With that many people over 60 years time you would think natural causes might have taken at least one of them by now unlike unlike flying boating skydiving hiking submarining skiing etc isn't it amazing the most dangerous dangerous activity of them all no one has ever been lost or even injured in space yeah what are the odds take care scott p.s if they do decide to take out the iss and its occupants they will be the first astronauts ever in over six decades of space space exploration to perish in space yeah that's why i'm not counting on it i just don't think it would have much of an impact especially on the younger people younger people that have no interest in space at all they'd be like yeah whatever that's a thing right i think my dad told me about or my grandfather talked about the moon once 
This one's called Interview on UK Unexplained Podcast. Mark, I'm fairly new to the Flat Earth Theory and follow your videos and enjoy your in-depth research and conclusive prowess. However, when you speak of the stars being projections and boil down this incredible, amazing creation to the Truman Show as if there's some huge brained alien pulling levers and pushing buttons, you've underplayed and or missed the mind-boggling near-infinite details of this, this creation. Uh, no, I have not. A construction that only an entity so superior as to have created it could only be a loving ominous um omnis omnis wow forget it an omnipresent god omnis omniscient whatever uh without a belief in god our creator the timeless master architect as an entity that should be praised and worshipped you will always come up short but i am convinced you are on to something big uh, yeah well, I, I, I'm not saying that it isn't the divine. I'm just saying that God may have subcontracted out the work. So, because remember, if an, if an advanced technology shows up here in some giant golden spaceship, there's going to be people worshiping, worshiping them regardless. Just saying. This one's called Survival Guide. Thanks, Jason Kuntz. <laughs> I know it sounds bad. K-U-N-T-Z. Hopefully it's his real name. This one's called a short message from Thailand. Mark, since we live in a closed system, nothing can leave this realm combined with the fact that the majority of people are being dumbed down. This may be something to think about. Greetings and keep it up. And he sent me a picture, picture, picture. What if flat earth knowledge is just a spillover of global ignorance? All right, coming down to the end here, uh, survival guide request. Mark, many thanks. I wish I had opened my eyes sooner. Anthony, this one's called Coast to Coast. Hi, Mark. I've listened to every interview that you have done except Coast to Coast. I would love that you could send them both to me. Love your courage, Mark. And shout out to you from Danbury, Connecticut. Connecticut. It's probably a silent C. I don't think they actually say Connecticut. Anyway, that's from Costa. And yeah, if anyone wants the Coast to Coast interviews that I've done, uh, I can't put them up on YouTube because they will absolutely copyright strike me. They uh, just send send me an email and I've got them on my machine. I'll just shoot them off to you. I cannot reproduce them anywhere. I actually had to sign a release form for that. This one's called a question or two. Mark, not sure if this email address still works or not, but I saw it online. Thought I'd give it a shot. I just listened to your interview on Canary Cry today. Well, that was a couple of years ago, and I'm about two weeks into this bizarre journey myself. I started searching for the same reason you did. I wondered what all this flat earth stuff buzz was about and how someone could actually believe it. I set out to get some ammo to disprove it, and now I'm wondering if I've been lied to my whole life. I was surprised to find so many Christians expo espousing flat earth views, but then realized it's precisely because of my Christian beliefs that this is so plausible. Everything in scripture makes more sense from a flat earth point of view. It's apparent that the biblical writers believed, as most did at the time, that the earth was flat. But here's the rub. My biggest holdout is what to do with Jim Irwin. Jim Irwin. I've heard that many of the astronauts were Freemasons, but here's a Christian, a creationist no less, who left NASA after his moon mission to go into the ministry. Uh, just, to, just to clarify, because I know a lot about the Masons, there's plenty of Masons in Christianity. Masons accept all religions. They don't care who you worship as long as you worship someone. That's the key. And you're not supposed to talk about who you're worshiping when you're in meetings. But no, 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 uh, I, the, the Masons would have no membership, at, 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 no membership at all if they wouldn't allow Christians in. So um, <clears throat> after his retirement as a colonel in 1972, Irwin founded, <coughs> excuse me, the High Flight Foundation. He spent the next 20 years as a goodwill ambassador for the Prince of Peace, stating that Jesus walking on the earth is more important than man walking on the moon. Hmm. He said that his experiences in space had made God more real to him than before. In the three days of exploration, there were a couple times when I actually looked up to see the earth. He wrote, that beautiful, warm, living object looked so fragile, so delicate, that if you touched it with a finger, it would crumble and fall apart. Uh, you know, like a stage prop. Seeing this has to change a man, has to make a man appreciate the creation of God and the love of God. Is he lying about walking on the moon? Yes, he is. Why? 
what are you talking about? The Apollo program is a piece of crap. Nothing stands up. Too many plot holes. Too many inconsistencies. Why would he continue to lie even after his retirement and his time sharing the gospel around the world? Because he's military. He, he's ex-Air Force. It, you, just because you retire from the Air Force or the military, it doesn't mean you would distance yourself forever. There are certain classified documents. Look, if, if you see something classified, there's no statute of limitations on that. It means you're classified forever until your deathbed. And even then, you shouldn't say anything on your deathbed because they'll say, oh, yeah, we'll take care of your family. Anyway, thanks for your help as I continue to seek answers. But, but most importantly, seek the truth about God, his world, and his word. That's from Robert. And should we end on that one? Or do we have any other ones we can look real quick? Mm, let's end on this one. We'll call, it, we'll call it this one. Um, this one's called Luna Wave Phenomena. Hi, Mark. Just curious if you've seen the presence of the Luna Wave Phenomena online. Yes, I have. It was a couple of years ago now before I heard of Flat Earth and I watched a heap of videos from Crow 777 on YouTube showing his captured footage of the Luna Wave. Uh, are you pronouncing it right? Is it Luna or Lunar? Lunar wave. Anyway, this wave across our moon looks like a digital distor distortion in a holographic or digitally broadcast picture. Crow 777 is very into looking up and realize its spaces and what we are told just from this earthbound observation. I haven't listened to anything from Crow 777 for a long time, but tonight chose his latest upload for his pre-bed listening tool. And all I could think was, wow, this guy sounds like Mark Sargent, which I now think was a prompt to get in touch and share the Luna Wave phenomena as it's very fitting with the understanding of Flat Earth as you share. I haven't gone to the effort to pick out any of Crow's uploads. It's midnight. I just couldn't sleep before emailing. A YouTube search on the Luna Wave and Crow 777 should point you in the right direction. I'm sure you'd be very interested. Thanks, Mark. Regards, Caroline from Tasmania, Australia. And yes, I'll end on that one. And yes, I actually interviewed Crow 777 on Strange World. You can look it up. It's one of my Strange World episodes. He's there in the list. And he is now not necessarily a believer in the Flat Earth where he's proposing a certain model but he's absolutely questioning that space exists. He says it's either a distortion or that it's actually physical water. You know, the water's above and the water's below. So Crow 777, I consider him an ally in, in this war against mainstream science. And with that, let's call this one good. Like Bob Ross would say, let's call this painting good. Thank you to everybody who emailed me their questions. Thank you for everyone in the future. And if you want to send me yours... Just shoot them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.